Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquez of Living Streams International. We meet behind the trade fair at the Life Cathedral and bringing you matters of faith with graphic online. I was reading the scriptures one of the days and then I found something that was very interesting. In Judges chapter 6, Judges chapter 6 begins with a story of the Midianites, uh, the Israelites doing something wrong and the Midianites overrunning their, their fields and overrunning all the things that um, they had. And the Bible then said something that I got curious about. So there was a man called Gideon and this Gideon was threshing wheat but he was threshing wheat in a cave, in a wine press. He was threshing wheat in a wine press. Now, an angel came and sat under a tree and then Gideon looked at that person and then and the, the person addressed Gideon and said, the Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Hold a minute, hold a minute. Something is not right over there. You do not thresh wheat in a wine press. A wine press is normally a, a little bit hollow and for the sake of fermentation, it doesn't need a lot of air coming in there so that it leaves more of heat and uh, it's so that wine cellars are normally um, dark places so that it must aid the process of fermentation. So Gideon was in a cave and the Bible specifically said that he was hiding for fear of the Midianites, that he was hiding away, he was threshing wheat in the wine press because of fear. So here is a man filled with fear, doing something, threshing wheat, in a wine press. So he's even at the wrong place. And then the, the next thing that was interesting to me was threshing wheat and a wine press. Normally, wheat is tr uh, we, we thresh wheat at, uh, on threshing floors, that is at places where there's a lot of air, so that the chaff which, which comes can be blown away. You thresh wheat at places where there will be wind and air to take away the, the chaff. But here is Gideon in a wine press, a place where there's not much of wind fermentation going through. So you can imagine Gideon would throw his chaff and he'd be covered with the chaff. There's no wind blowing. And then an angel comes to town, makes this man hiding for fear. And look at what the angel said, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Oh boy, boy, wait, 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 wait. Is that a lie? The man is afraid and you're calling him a mighty man of valor. The man is hiding and you're saying he's a mighty man of valor. The man is, 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 is and you are calling him a mighty man of valor? Oh, wait a minute. You know one thing? Our situations or our circumstances don't define who God calls us. Our situations don't, def God don't, don't define, God never defines us by our situations. God never defines you by your circumstances. You might be low in the pit, but there's a prince coming in you. You might be in the prison, but there's a prime minister in you. You may be born in a lonely ma uh, manger, in a lonely manger and lonely manger with animal and grass for your bed and animals for companion. But guess what? You are still the king. So God doesn't look at us through the eyeglasses of humanity. And God doesn't look at us through the eyeglasses of our failure. But God looks at us by the definition of what he had. Our destiny. The plans he had. So he called Gideon. He said, yes, you do not recognize yourself. You think you are nobody. But I see you a mighty man of valor. In you is this little speck of courage. 
in you is a little speck of valor. I'm going to tap into it. I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to raise it up. That is what God does. So guess what? You can call me a failure, but God calls me a mighty man of valor. You can call me a fearful person, but God calls me a mighty man of valor. Your circumstances don't define, doesn't give God their definition of you. God defines you according to his plans, according to his purpose. Here's a man who is afraid, but he's a war captain. Here's a baby lying in the manger, but that's a king. There's only wise people who will know and give that definition to you. Don't let your circumstance give you a de definition. Raise yourself up above it. Because there's a better definition of you from above. Oh, I love that. That same person, afraid. That same person, covered with chaff. God called Gideon a mighty man of valor. Lift up your hand. The drooping hand. Lift up the hand of desperation. Lift up the hands of frustration. Lift up those hands of despondency. For God is about to do something new. And I'm excited about it. Why? Because a fearful man is called a man of valor. So you are. A mighty man of valor. Or for gender equality, woman of valor. Come on, lift up your hands. Father, Strengthen those hands. Father, speak into those hands. Bring courage into that heart. Remove the ropes of fear. Tear it apart. Let someone, oh God, walk in courageous paths of destiny. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, see you next time.